Hope everyone's doing well today. This is Keith McGowan, the Outboard Dad, here to help you have a better boating experience. And please like, subscribe, send me any comments you have. Today we're going to continue on with our test. This is the motor we picked up with a rod knock, supposedly. I did a little check on it. You watched the little short video that I did. Just a quick walk around, quick visual. We already know the power tilt and trim works. I didn't really check to see if it was leaking or not, but I didn't see any oil that was obvious. We do have new spark plugs in here, NGK spark plugs, and looks like a couple new hoses here or there. So as I said, we just finished rigging this on. We're going to get the hoist down and we're going to start doing some tests on this motor. We'll start with a compression check. Uh, as I look at my wiring, it looks very similar to my Optimax, where this was kind of quickly taken out of the boat. <laughs> So uh, I want to unplug that before I start doing any tests. I might just use a jumper wire or I have another set of controls we'll plug in here to use our key switch. This way we can check spark on all the cylinders while we're doing our compression check. So let's start going through this. We'll hook up the battery, disconnect that um, ignition wiring harness so nothing shorts out and uh, we'll get ready to start doing some tests. Motor seems to swivel nicely. We'll get our eye bolt off of the top of the flywheel here. Put that back in the toolbox. Flywheel turns okay so far. So as we look a little closer here, as I said, we do have new spark plugs in this. See a little bit of corrosion, a little bit of rush, but rust but not anything different from a uh, typical age of this motor. It is here a 2001 150 horsepower carbureted motor. So we're going to go ahead and disconnect this wire harness so that we don't short anything out. We'll take a picture of this. Well, I have it in the video, right? So let's get the colors of these wires to make sure they get connect back up. This looks like power tilt and trim with our green and blue. And then we have a brown wires here for our safety alarms. So we'll go ahead and unplug this because I just don't want anything shorting out while we're doing our tests. Now what I'll do is I'll put a little piece of tape around these three wires because this way it just identifies that I remember where they were connected to just for when we hook it back up. So I wanted to share with you, interestingly enough, when we pull the motor cover off, what do we have inside here in this little bag? It's probably never been opened but it's something a lot of people have seen but never used. Go ahead and take it off. What do we have here? Still intact. Has some instructions on it. Emergency starting procedure. You know what the emergency starting procedure is? If your battery fails, is this rope. Check it out. Emergency starting procedure. So this is a little old school, um, even though this is a 2001 motor. What I do like, there are a lot of opinions out there. I'm not going to go back and forth with different people's opinions, but these carbureted motors, the older school motors that don't have, it still has a computer, right? Still has a module on it for its ignition system and everything, but it's not like the Optimax that needs an electronic fuel pump. It's not like any four strokes that need to have all their monitoring systems on them. I can take this rope, hook it on here, and wrap the rope around my pulley, my flywheel, and I could theoretically pull start this motor. Now, if you're standing on the boat, you know, maybe you have a little more leverage or maybe you have two guys as a six cylinder motor to be cranking over. Uh, so it may be a little ridiculous. I don't know if anybody's ever tried it. I have not. I know that for lawnmower engines, since I was a lawnmower mechanic many, many years ago when I was a kid, they outlawed these because if the rope got stuck on the flywheel, it would rip this around and bust you in the kneecaps. Uh, if, if it was a lawnmower engine. So, uh, but pretty cool that they still put those in there. Hey, you get out there and your batteries are dead and you can't start your motor. 
couple guys on this rope, you may be able to get back in. So pretty cool, some old school stuff. Actually, the rope's in great shape here. So just thought that was a cool side note. Now we'll take a look at this motor a little closer. I'm going to go hook up my ignition. We'll crank it over a couple times, pull the spark plugs out. I hear what it sounds like because they did said, say a rod knock. So let's see and get into this motor a little deeper. So hooked up our ignition wiring harness. Now I still have the old control level on lever on the uh, old stand over there with the Optimax we were testing. So I'll have to put a jumper in this for our neutral safety switch. Um, but we can, now that we have battery hooked up, I just have it jumped out to the other battery. You can take a little closer look at our power tilt and trim. Uh, that alone is worth the price of, of what I paid for this motor. So I do see someone put a lot of grease around the seals. I'm not a big fan of that. We'll probably clean that off. I don't see anything running out or dripping, um, but I'll probably get a, a dirty old rag in here and pull some of that great grease off of there. There is some minor rust on the uh, 12 volt motor, but nothing out of the ordinary. It does seem to function properly. So that's a good start. We can check our lower unit oil. We'll get to that next. I really want to see what this motor does when we start to crank it over. So let's get a jumper on that neutral safety switch. And let's see what this thing sounds like. Just kicking it over. I'm not going to try and start it. Just going to kick it over. So let's see what it sounds like. So I went ahead and jumped out my neutral safety switch just so we can go ahead and uh, crank this over and just kind of listen and hear what it sounds like. I hear the knock they're talking about. I don't know if you can hear that. I hear that knock. Let's get the spark plugs out. We'll do a compression check. Maybe it's a bad cylinder that's making that knock. So let's check this compression. So as I pull my plugs out one by one, I'm going to go ahead and inspect what they look like. Maybe there's aluminum on one uh, while I'm getting ready for my compression check. These plugs are like pretty new. Obviously had some run time on them. Don't see anything concerning yet. So I am going to go ahead and put those spark plugs back in these wires and rest them on the engine block. So this way I can see that they're all sparking. Although they did say the motor ran, we're still going to just double check these things. So there's usually some wires and stuff here. We can tuck them behind against the engine block just to check to see if we can get a spark. Let's see what we got. Now I have nothing. What did I do wrong? Harness came unplugged. This doesn't have the little clips on it anymore to hold it together and came unplugged. So, you know, you start to freak out, but no big deal. <coughs> Got spark on all those three. <coughs> Got spark on all those three. So let's do our compression check now and see what we got. So I always like to remove all the plugs when I do my compression check. Uh, kind of saves on the battery a little bit. Also lets the rest of it run freer. Yeah, I'm about 115 on that one. That one's 120. The other reason I like to leave the spark plugs in is I like to have the arc have some place to go. Uh, some people say you could ruin a coil if you run it without a spark plug hooked up to it. Ooh, 100. We're going to scope that cylinder. So this one is low. Do it one more time. 105 is about the best that one got. So we are beyond the 10% mark from 120 to 105. Yeah, you're just past the 10% mark here. We don't want to be more than 10% difference on our cylinders. So maybe this rod knock or this knocking sound is because of that cylinder being bad. We'll scope it, but let's see what the rest show. 120. Whoa, look at that. 80 pounds. So, so far we've got two cylinders in question. This one more so than the others. I have a feeling we're going to be pulling these heads off pretty soon. We'll get the cowling off. 
pull the heads off first and do a quick inspection, but this is going to be a rebuild. Of course, we're also going to check the block when we pull it apart to make sure the block is still good for a rebuild. Last one. Let's see here we go. 122. All right. So we know this is not a motor we're going to get out on the water with, right? That's for sure. That's why we do these tests. If you're buying a motor, you know, especially if you're running it on a stand, you want to check it out. Coming out with an outboard motor buying guide that's going to go through some of this. It's also going to refer to some of these different videos. That's why I'm trying to do this on multiple different motors. I did a Yamaha 9.9 four-stroke, a Mercury 9.9 two-stroke. We did a Johnson Everood 150 horsepower. We did the Optimax 135, and now we're doing this 150, and we're going to keep doing other different motors so you can see what the compression ratings are and what we're finding. So let's get my camera hooked up to my phone and see what we find when we scope this cylinder. So I got my camera hooked up here to my iPad. Let's see if we can see. Let's pick that really bad cylinder first. Let's see what it looks like. That piston's all the way up, so I'm going to go ahead and turn the flywheel over. And there you have it. Pretty badly scored up cylinder wall there. See if we can look all the way around. Oh yeah, there's some chunks. May have to be sleeved. We won't know until we pull the head. Let's check another one. This one had good compression. Doesn't look too bad. This one here was a little low as well, if you remember. And yeah, that's definitely has some scoring on it. So I wonder if they were using some cheap oil, maybe. Now I see some hash marks in the cylinders too, so wonder if this maybe is a low hour motor or if it was used and somebody rebuilt it once already. Looks like the next thing we're going to have to do is pull these heads. Let's get this cowlings off of here so we have a little more room to work with and then see if we break any bolts pulling the heads off. Let's check it out. 